then it's lock noob and in front of you is um well it's a medico five pin lock with um a sidebar it says on here that it's a medico 51s it's a screw in uh, mortise cylinder and um yeah, it's, it's really a bucket list lock of mine, this one. It's, it's, it's one of those locks which, you know, you hear so much about when you first start picking, you know, um, that and your multi-locks, uh, your pin and pin multi-locks, and you think to yourself, oh, one day, one day I will m be able to pick a Medico. I'll be able to pick one of these um, uh, Medicos with a sidebar. So why, why are they um, sort of uh, revered? Why are they known as a high-security lock? And by the way, there are much harder locks in the world than this. Um, but for me, this is a difficult lock. Well, have a look at the key. It looks normal sort of now, but if I just turn it back and forth, can you see how you can see some of the uh, inside of the cuts a little more clearly as I turn it back and forth? That's because they are at different angles. If I turn it upside down, you'll see it's a lot more clear. Can you see how... Um, you've got some which are uh, about 90 degrees and then you've got some which are cut a lot more oblique um, somewhere around um, uh, probably 20 15 degrees You'll, so what you end up having to do is do two things first you need to pick the pins to the right height and the bitting on this is pretty tough you'll see here that you have some um, highs at the back, um, so pins 5 and 3 in particular, um, protected by pins 4, 2 and 1, which are cut low. In fact, uh, pin 4 looks like a zero cut. Once you've picked it to the height, sometimes at the same time if you're lucky, you then need to, um, this is actually not from this lock, it's a, a different lock, is you need to then turn the pin so that it reaches exactly the right angle so that this cut on the outside of the pin is 90 degrees to the key. That means that a sidebar can slide in and once all the pins are in the right place, that sidebar will attract enough for you to be able to rotate the plug or the core. Have a look at the, the tip of the pin, here it is. Can you see how um, some people call it a chisel tip? Well, it must be that shape um, so that it can uh, ride the key bitting and turn to the angle the key is cut in. And I think it has around 20, 25 degrees of play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into a vise and I'm going to try to pick and gut it for you. Um, a bit nervous because I've, I've practiced a couple of times on this but it is quite tough. I will be using top of the keyway tensioning using my uh, ever loved Mad Bob 1.2mm pry bar and this beautiful uh, medium gem hook made by my friend Tepene which just has enough sort of reach that I can um, pick from the bottom of the keyway and if you see the angle I can get to, I can get quite steep in there to avoid the zero cut on um, this key and set, you can see there, pin uh, three without oversetting pin two in front of it. So it's very important to pick choice in this lock. Okay, um, next time you see me, I'll have this in the vise and I'll do a pick and gut. I'll see you in a second. Oh yes. Before I uh, do throw this into a vice, I forgot to do two things. One, say that this is lent to me kindly by my friend Yukov. Thank you, Yukov. And two, I never really showed you um, how, how it works. It just works like a normal lock. It really is no mystery to it. Um, okay, right, I'll throw it into the vice in one second.
Okay, so uh, now I'm going to try to gut this. Okay, so uh, this is it's a good thing about this is you can uh, take it all apart from the top. So uh, see when I get in there. Oh. It's because I uh, turned the core back, but it's still unlocked. Idiot. There we go. So I'll put these in like that. I'll show you those chisel tipped pins in a second. Second little grub screw. So we had a, what looks like a mushroom spool in one, and then. It's like a standard in two. What else do we have? Okay, so we have another standard in chamber three. Another standard in chain before. Great, so we've got another chisel pin there, and so, so far, just tip the camera forwards for you. Hopefully, you can see here um, the pins very nicely. So, you can see that these chisel tip pins here are really cool. There's a little, can you see a little ear there? That is the little nib that restricts the movement of the pin within the chamber so you can't turn the pin um, the other way around so this is the correct way around if you're facing a lock um, and you can see there how that little nib there stops the movement so that it can rotate somewhere around 45 degrees or so you also see there's a little groove in there that groove is for the sidebar so let's see what that sidebar is or where it is and I can do that by unscrewing the back of this. And being gentle. So the idea with these pins is that you set them and rotate them into position. And once the driver pins are set, you will be able to turn the key pin to the right angle for the sidebar to fit in. That's why they're such an annoying pick and so hard to get on camera as well, I found. Okay, so follow up. There we go. And you can see there the sidebar. Where's the uh, 
tweezers, hopefully they'll pull it out for you. Come on, there we go. And there it is. So it's got a couple of little springs on, one there and one there. And then you can see how all of these little bars, one, two, three, four, five, have to engage with a pin. So let's try and get a pin and show you. Let's try and get this nice long driver pin. So if I, if you were to look, so now as you're looking from the back of the lock and here is a pin, you'll see that there's that groove in the side of the pin needs to basically rest in there. If the pin is at the wrong angle, like that, you will not be able to open the lock because the sidebar won't be able to fall in. The pin needs to be rotated so it falls into that gap. So there you go. Um, this is the, well it says it's the it's a Medico 51S. It's got a single sidebar as you can see and that's, um, you can see where the sidebar fits inside the plug there. You can also see down here can you see that the there are little cutouts here? That is where the pins sit. And that little nub, which I described earlier, there we go, pop that in, restricts the movement of that pin. So you can see how it can move. Um, let's see, I've got a nice sharp pick somewhere. Need a, a needle-like pick. Hopefully, you can see now that um, you can rotate this pin in its chamber um, a little bit. You see how as the key moves in and out, it, it moves ever so slightly back and forth in there. So different um, parts of that key are cut at different angles. So you can see it move um, depending on which angle it's at. When it's the right angle, you'll see that it's parallel um, or oblique with the, the plug and this groove lines up with the cutaway here which allow the sidebar to fit in. If it's say the wrong angle, let's move it to this um, cut of the key, um, that gap there would not match up with the sidebar gate and it wouldn't open. Um, hopefully you can see down here that there is movement um, of that in, but only um, at this angle, so it wasn't 45 degrees, it's probably more like 20 degrees or so, it's 20 degrees movement. So these pins do have an actual direction. Um, okay, so I mean, it's a really nice lock, um, you can see some anti-drill pins there, probably hardened steel pins, one, two, three I think, to stop you drilling out anything. And it's, uh, I think it's well deserved um, sort of reputation for being a high security lock even though it does have um, only four standard pins and a mushroom spool the fact is that you've got to not only set the pins and rotate them to let the sidebar uh, fit in as well um, just makes this a really tough pick anyway I hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching and I'll see you next time